He's provocative. He wants to ban non-French names like Mohammed. The French chief rabbi says he's an anti-Semite. But Eric Zemmour has come seemingly out of nowhere to be the lead candidate for president of France, one of the world's richest countries and a major nuclear power. Can he win? I'm Michael Daventry and you're watching The Sunday View from The Jewish News. There are two countries in the world today where the head of state is Jewish. The first is obviously Israel, where Isaac Herzog recently became its 11th president. The second is Ukraine, whose president Volodymyr Zelensky was born in 1978 to Jewish parents. By next spring, there could be a third, and a lot closer to home now that Eric Justin Leon Zemmour has declared his candidacy to become the next president of France. Zemmour has built a brand for himself around anger and hostility towards immigrants, especially Muslims. He says there's a need for a reconquest, a deliberate reference to the Spanish Inquisition. His opponents say that doesn't tally with his background. His parents were Jews who'd recently moved from Algeria away from the bitter war of independence that was being fought there against France. But he spends a lot of time insisting he is not a migrant. I was born in France, he says. My parents were French citizens. It's a point he perhaps wants to underscore because Eric Zemmour's popularity has soared over his views on immigration. A lot of what he has said would place him firmly alongside France's existing far-right leader Marine Le Pen. They both claim Islamism is an existential threat to France's future. Zemmour has argued that foreign first names, like Mohammed for example, should be banned and that French Muslims should be made to choose between their country and their religion. He's twice been convicted of inciting racial hatred. Some might say he's a natural ally to Le Pen, but Zemmour takes things further and there's no other way of putting this. He loves to have an argument and be controversial, not least because it keeps him in the news. There was another presidential candidate not long ago who loved to do that. Take Vichy France, for example, that puppet regime set up by Nazi Germany after it defeated the French in the Second World War. Like anywhere occupied in Europe, Vichy France saw Jews rounded up in vast numbers across the country to be taken to concentration camps. Few argue with this point of view. Even the French state, which admitted in 1995 that it was guilty of assisting the Holocaust. But Zemmour says that is not true. He says that the Vichy French regime under Marshal Pétain certainly helped to expel hundreds of thousands of foreign Jews from Eastern Europe who had fled to France before it fell. But in a book published seven years ago, Zemmour argued Vichy France tried to protect French Jews from expulsion. Most mainstream historians say that's simply not true. They say that if Zemmour and his family had been living in Vichy France in the 1940s, they would have been deported. A few months ago, France's chief rabbi went even further. Antisémite, certainement, raciste, évidemment. Quand vous dites simplement qu'il y a trop de tel ou tel, moi qui porte un texte qui s'appelle la Constitution, qui est fondé sur l'idée des droits de l'homme, et qui porte aussi un texte qui s'appelle la Bible et qui dit Tu aimeras l'étranger car tu as été étranger en terre d'Égypte, je ne peux pas être en phase. Then there's that passage from his new book, in which Zemmour refers to a terrorist attack on a Jewish school in Toulouse back in 2012. He appeared to suggest that the gunman's victims, which included children as young as three, did not belong to France because their families chose to bury them in Israel. Anthropologists, he wrote, have taught us that we are from the country where we are buried. In a live television interview, he defended himself by saying he'd spotted a problem with France's sense of identity. Why is it, he said, that the Jewish victims of the attack were laid to rest in Israel while the gunman was buried in Algeria? He said, my parents are buried in France, they're not buried in Israel. Le drame français, c'est qu'on ne fait plus des Français. On ne les fait plus à l'école, on ne les fait plus à la télévision, on ne les fait plus dans la culture dominante. Voilà. Et cette, cette, ce texte-là, c'est pour dire, regardez, on n'arrive plus à assimiler, c'est triste. He's also suggested Alfred Dreyfus, the French Jewish army captain who was infamously and wrongly convicted of high treason, may not have been innocent. Comments like these have led some to suggest Zemmour isn't actually Jewish. He has certainly said very little publicly on his own faith. 
The New York Times says he told a French magazine seven years ago that he's an atheist, but that he keeps kosher at home, and sometimes goes to synagogue on the High Holy Days. So perhaps Zemmour doesn't ignore his Jewish family background, but for him, it is French identity that should always be supreme. There's no question that this is a candidate of the far right, not the French mainstream. And it's a far right that seems prepared to fight. That's what happened at a Zemmour rally in the first weekend of December when protesters appeared in the hall wearing anti-racism t-shirts. But there's something more. Think back to some of the most divisive campaigns we've seen in recent years, like the Brexit referendum or the 2016 American presidential election. Those involved candidates who managed to persuade people that they were fighting the establishment, the mainstream politicians. Eric Zemmour is doing that too. In November, he had a spat with London's mayor, Sadiq Khan, who said Zemmour was not welcome in the British capital because of his divisive politics in a city that traditionally celebrates diversity. Zemmour came anyway, and he used every media opportunity to attack the mayor for being sectarian and totalitarian. Attacking Muslim politicians doesn't harm him at home. It didn't harm Donald Trump either. So the question is, can he win? The short answer is that no opinion poll has shown him on top, but he has soared in just the last few months, dislodging Marine Le Pen on the far right. What's more, by evoking perceptions of France's former glory, he's making inroads with centre-right voters as well. You've already heard his views on Vichy France, Zemmour also speaks flatteringly of Napoleon and Charles de Gaulle. In fact, his video announcing he was a candidate for president was deliberately crafted to look like de Gaulle's wartime BBC radio broadcast encouraging the French resistance from London. Images like that could play well with middle-class voters, who traditionally support centre-right movements like the Republicans. It could be enough for Zimbabwe to knock Marine Le Pen into third place and secure a second round runoff against Emmanuel Macron. Now, opinion polls so far indicate that in a head-to-head -head contest, Macron would win and win comprehensively. But remember that Macron came seemingly out of nowhere just four years ago to defeat mainstream candidates and win the French presidency. Remember also that Zemmour is essentially the Donald Trump of French politics. He doesn't need to be right, he just needs to make headlines. So it's going to be a bitter and divisive few months to come in French politics.